Okay, so I've got this question here from a student, and they've selected D as an answer. So we'll look at this problem and see if we agree with that and um, talk about, in general, how to deal with these problems. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this algebraically by balancing the equation. So I have 6 this times the sine of 8x plus 2 equals negative 3. So I want to isolate this sine of 8x. I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. Then I get 6 times the sine of 8x equals negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Then I have, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. And the sine of 8x equals negative 5 over 6. So the question is, we're trying to solve for x here. So I'm going to take the arc sine or the inverse sine of both sides, what that will do, I'm going to take the inverse sine of the sine, that will cancel the sine out. And what will be left is whatever the input is. So if there's an 8x in here, the inverse sine of sine will just equal that 8x. If there was a 5x in here, it would just equal 5x. Then the other side of the equation, we have the inverse sine of 5, 6, whatever that is. And we'll find that out in a moment. So 8x equals the inverse sine of oops, negative 5 6 and it looks like this problem is in degrees I see the 360s here so I want to pull up my calculator see if I have it open it might take a second to load well, I don't know I, I'm using the calculator because I want to find the inverse sine of negative 5 6 and is there any three are out here okay so make sure under mode because we're dealing with degrees, scroll down, go over, here's degree, select that, quit out, and I'm going to hit second sine, and then negative 5 divided by 6, right, hit enter. So it's about negative 56.44 degrees. And I'm going to leave this value here, I'm not going to write the whole thing out, but the idea is that um, 8x will then have to equal about... I already forgot what I had there. Fit, negative 56.44. It's about 56.44. And if 8x equals negative 56.44, if you take the sine of uh, negative 56.44, uh, you're going to get negative 5, 6, and this whole thing works out. But that'll be true for um, any angle that's coterminal with negative 56.44 degrees. And that just means if I add 360, 360 degrees, for example, to negative 56.44 degrees, I'm basically back at the same spot, and, I, and my angle has the same sine and cosine. So for example, if, oops, if, I have, uh, if I have a unit circle here, and you can imagine that negative 56.44 degrees is down here, right, about. So this point has some sine, some y value, and some cosine. So it's some point x, y. Well, if you add 360, right, to this, I go all the way around, and I end right back up at the same spot, and I have the same sine and cosine of that angle. And then if I add 360 again, I end up back at the same spot. Or I could add negative 360 and go in the other direction. So I can add any multiple of 360, positive or negative, but as a whole number. So I multiply 360 degrees by n, where n is some integer. Now, that's what 8x has to equal. If 8x is negative 56.44 degrees plus some amount of rotations, then it's going to have the same sign. But I want to know what x equals, not 8x. So I divide everything by 8. Everything by 8. So I get negative 56.44, which you can see is negative 7.06. Estimated there plus, but then 360 divided by 8, and we have 360 divided by 8 is 45. So plus 45, because we're di the words are divided by 8, we can actually get to the same result essentially 8 times faster. So we don't have to rotate down around a full 360. We only need to rotate by 45 degrees. I'm going to cross this one off for now, then we're almost done. So, so far then, I'm going to pick choice E. And we're basically there, except remember that the way sine and cosine work, sine refers to 
my line tool here. There it is. Okay. The height. That's not a line. The sine. All right. I'll just sketch out a line. Sine refers to um, the height of a point. Right. So if I draw this line right here, this point has a certain height. There's a certain sine value, but so does this one over here. These two points have the same heights and therefore the same signs. So the question is, where is this point? Well, if, if you want to think about it, it depends how they counted it here. What I would do is I'd say it's, it's 180 plus about 56 degrees. Right? This 56 degrees is negative here, but I have an equal 56 degrees past 180 on that side. That's the way I like to think about it. Let's see if, they, if their answers match up with that in a moment. So I do 180 plus, and I'm going to say, let me grab this exact amount here, but I'm going to multiply by negative 1 because I'm actually adding a positive 56 degrees. So I'd say 236.4. So 236.44 degrees will have the same sign. So that means that 8x could also equal 8x could also, oops, 8x could also equal, let me draw it here, instead of negative 56.44, 8x could equal that angle that we just had, which was 236.44, 236.44, plus any amount of rotations. So, oops, um, that's going to give us, uh, again, we divide that by 8, it's going to give us 40, Five degrees here in the end, but I'll just I'll write it out for now, and I'll scroll down, and then uh, we want to also divide everything by eight. So divide this number we have here by eight. We get twenty nine point five five. So x could be twenty nine. I'll say point five six to the nearest hundredth, plus for any amount of forty five degree rotations, and I'll look through my choices and see if they have that. Now they don't. It doesn't mean we're wrong. It just means they're counting it in a different way. So how are they counting it? Well, another way to look at this angle is to say that it's, it's negative 180 plus 56.44 degrees, right? I can go, let me turn the color you can see, I can go back 180 because of negative rotation and then up 56 degrees there. So it's negative 180 plus 56.44 and that might help us. So negative 180 plus about 56.44, and that's negative 123.56. I want to divide that by 8, right? and I get negative 15.45 about. So what I just did right there was I wrote this angle in another way. They just happened to look at it from a different perspective. Um, so 8x could also be all of those numbers that we just got. What was that, negative 1, 2, 3, 5, 6? I really want that to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but I guess I'll have to do. Plus 360 degree rotations. And then I divide everything by 8, and I get negative 15, about negative 15.45 plus 45 degree rotations. So that's the other answer I'm getting. And I see it right here. Negative 15.45 plus 45 degree rotations. Um, so that's with sine. With cosine, you can't really see it here. It's a little messy, but with cosine, let me just draw real quick. Um, what's really nice about the cosine problems is with sine, you have to kind of work around to find what angles have equal values because you're looking for a, another angle with an equal y value. But cosine is beautiful because what you'll find is, look, if you have some problem, let's say this is our angle here. It's, it's like about 50 degrees, and there's an x, y point there. Well, Cosine refers to the x values, not the y values. So with cosine, if you just go in the opposite direction, same measure, opposite direction, you're going to get another point. This will be, let's say, relatively speaking, x negative y. These two angles are just opposite directions, right? So this is positive 50 degrees. This would be negative 50, right? I'll say this is positive 50 degrees, and this is negative 50. So with cosine, what's so wonderful about the problems they give is that you can often just find one angle answer, so say 50 degrees plus 360 times n, and then the other answer would just be negative 50 times uh, plus negative 50 plus 360 times n. So you see these answers that just start off with opposite terms. 
So when you see a cosine problem, look for that. There's opposite terms in the front. The sign's not as convenient, right? You have to do a little bit more work there. But I hope this helped.